Hi there. Um, I've been asked by quite a lot of people just to talk through the rubber dam clamp selection that we sell. Um, and this is the kit that we do, um, which is 12 clamps all together. And so I just thought I'd do a bit of a video to show you all the clamps, where they can be used and maybe some hints and tips. So it'd be a little bit longer than a normal sort of Instagram video offering, but I uh, hope it's useful. And first thing to say is a bit of a caveat, which is the right clamp to use is the one that fits. So these are just some guidelines and some tips. Um, but obviously, you might have to alter it depending on the clinical situation. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top of the board and we'll just work our way through and do some demos as we go. So um, I'm going to start with the wing clamps that we have in the kit. And the two molar ones we have are really our, our workhorse wing clamps. So they're the 13A and the um, 12A. Okay, so I'll just grab these out and talk you through them. So we've got the 13A and the 12A. Okay. So the reason we really love these clamps is that they have um, these serrations on them, okay? And that allows them to clamp a really, really wide range of different teeth, broken down teeth, big teeth, small teeth. You know, it'll do a lot of six, seven, eights out there. And they come as a bit of a pair. So you've got the 13A, which is wider on the, on the right-hand side. So that would always be the buckle. So that does your lower left and your upper right. And then you've got the 12A, which is wider on the left-hand side as I look at it, which would do your lower right. And your upper left okay um so if you like a, a winged technique which lots of people do then these are a real good workhorse clamp for you the other thing i really like doing with them is uh, a split dam and i'll show you the regular posterior split dam that i use um, and i use this whenever i'm not doing a bonding procedure so you know crown prep dismantling carriage removal quite often and then i'll sort of manage the gingiva and put a more formal dam on so we'll have a little look at that technique Okay, so um, I'm going to place the dam now, and just to show you, we are going to be using a product uh, called Isodam, uh, which is the one that we sell on the website, and I think this is the premium, the best uh, latex-free dam available, um, and I like to use for restorative work the heavy, um, as it just inverts a little more, although you can use the medium we also sell, um, which maybe is good for endo, single tooth stuff, but if you want restorative, you generally want a bit more traction. So as I've shown in previous videos, we can go ahead and just stamp all of the sheets um, using our rubber dam stamp that we sell with the kit. Um, and that's really helpful for getting the holes in the right place um, and, and getting the right size. And that can be done by, you know, um, you can d delegate that to, to, to nurse or anything because it's so easy with all the stamp punches done. So I'm going to show you this uh, split dam to begin with. So I've just punched the holes 3-7 uh, round to 3-1. And these, the, the aim of this is the stamp goes down into the mouth so it doesn't sort of affect your view or kind of get in the way of your photographs and things like that. So this is how I um, like to, to do it. And I will then basically do a cut between the, um, the four and the seven. Cut like that. And I like to leave just a couple of extra holes just to stabilize the anterior. So then we'll get our model. And we're going to go ahead and just place the uh, 13A on the 7, which is dead easy. And then we can just really easily throw this over. Uh, so I, I think this is a great dam uh, to, to do early in the early in the appointment and get the patient used to the dam and kind of get them to kind of see if they're going to be okay under the dam and all those kind of things and test the test their how they get on too. So you just literally throw it over. It's so easy because it's got such a big split in it and put the extra couple of anterior teeth uh, through um, and you can floss them if you needed to um, and they just, just kind of stop it from riding up. So that's that split dam done and push it down to roll it a little bit if you need um, and then we can pop the frame on. So the reason I like to do this with the, um, the winged 12A, 13A is that the wings just kind of help retract this a little bit once you've got the big split in it um, sometimes if you use a wingless it kind of folds over a little bit so with the, with the winged it's very helpful at just pushing out lingually and buckly and give you the retraction and that's what we're using this dam for really it's, it's a retraction aid um, and I find it much better for me personally than like an Optigate get the patient used to the dam and work really efficiently and then I'll change up for a formal dam for any kind of bonding procedure so that's done so I'll just go ahead and pop this off and then we'll um, move on with the demo and we'll work our way around the board. So that's the first two clamps done. So now we're going to get to the next two. And I, I use, I know other people do different, but I like to use wing clamps for my premolars generally. 
I uh, find them just as easy as, as a wingless. We do do a, a, a W2 uh, wingless as well, um, but I, I, I like the wing ones, I always use them. I, I find the wing technique very easy for, for sort of anterior sextants. So you've got the 2 and the 2A, and the 2 is just slightly uh, smaller than the 2A. To be honest, the 2 you probably use slightly more than the 2A, so if you're customising the kit, you, it's nice having the range though, so just pop those out. And we're just going to place a quick anterior um, dam, and it's a chance for me just to show you a nice uh, winged technique. So bring this in. Here's uh, another uh, sheet, and I've punched the holes from the 2.5 to the 1.5. I actually often will just go four to four, but um, this is something later on in the demo I want to show you on the premolar, so I've done a little bit further uh, than I sometimes would. So wing technique, I, I'll punch all the holes. Um, quite often I'll actually punch the holes on the, let's go that the right way around. Quite often I'll punch the holes on the frame just because it's easier to punch with a little bit of tension. And we sell a really nice rubber dam punch from a, uh, a UK company called YNR. Um, Got it. Here it is. So these are really, really nice, nice and sharp. Uh, so you use them to punch your holes. And when I do a wing technique, I'll, I'll bring it all in together. I know there's different ways, but that's what I do. So I'll, I'll pop it on the um, the frame with the bow uh, at the chin, uh, curved over so it's comfortable. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my premolar clamp and pop it in. I'm sure everyone's familiar with this technique, but what you're going to do is pull it wide, pop one uh, wing in, and pop uh, the other wing in. And that's it. Oh, I've not even got the right hole. Sorry, in the five. So I've actually uh, used this on a different uh, thing. I've had it on once, <laughs> which uh, is, is, is fine for the demo. So that's on the five. Here's my mouth, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and pop it up. So you want to eye up the tooth that you're going for, which is the five. I'm going to grab my dam assembly and get hold of the clamp and just open her up. And I'm going to look through the clamp and spot that five. And there he is there. So stretch over and over. And it's as easy as that, really. Once you've got it in position, we need to just clip over the wings. So I, I actually, my favourite instrument for this is my finger or thumb, uh, because it tends not to rip the dam. So here's one and two, and that's done. And then we just need to get the holes through. And um, I would liken this to buttoning your shirt. It's quite easy to lose a hole next to where your clamp is. So um, I would always try and put in the furthest away hole first, um, just to um, make sure I don't miss any holes, because um, that, that can happen in the heat of the battle. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get that last hole over the five on the um, patient's left hand side. And then I will use the 2A just to clamp that. And I quite often do this in the mouth as well. Just um, it just uh, helps stabilise it while I get the other um, teeth teeth down. So this will be the most uh, tricky bit of the demo because I, I'm on my own and I've got a moving uh, model. Um, but we're just going to try and get the holes in. And this is a team game, if you possibly can, to do with your nurse. Okay, so we're going to go and floss these through. And I'll just give you a couple of tips on flossing the contacts. So when you do this, what you want to do is get the floss between your fingers and you see how I start on the five here and I'm going to push actually firmly onto that tooth and roll it down into the embrasure, okay? And that'll pull it down with it. And then what you don't want to do is lift up. You want to roll over again, go onto the four this time, push onto that tooth and roll it down the embrasure. And you see that pulls it down without ripping the dam, which is what happens if you just keep pulling up and down. So you want one, roll down on the next roll down. I'm just going to work my way along and hopefully not have too much of a nightmare while I'm on camera. It's a bit easier to do with a bit of help this to be honest. And I have to say I've been I really like this Isodam. It's um I I use the Unident uh, Heavy for a long time. I think it's a very nice dam as well. Um but it, this just rips a lot less um coming through the embrasures particularly and it inverts uh, really well. I would say it's, yeah, for me personally, it's uh, maybe, I don't know, 20% improvement. Um, which, uh, bear in mind, I already really like the Unidon. I think that's a really decent um, uh, thing. And, uh, you know, and we do it at a pretty competitive price. I think it's about the same. So um, I would, yeah, recommend giving it a go at least. 
So once I've got the dam on, I'm just going to work my way around and I like to use a, a curved um, probe to do this just to invert the dam. So you see how the dam is rolling up and I've got a few interesting things for the different clamps later on in the demo. And we can just go ahead and just roll that to invert. Horrible noise. There you go. And the inversion's worth it because it's going to, once the dam's rolling down, uh, it's going to seal a lot, uh, a lot nicer. And, and one thing I've forgotten to do on that bit oops, is just, once you've got your dam pretty much there, it's always worth just rocking the um, clamp. So uh, you'll quite often, you'll if you go in close, you'll see there's a little bit of pink just poking out. But pretty much always when you place a clamp, especially a wing, wing technique. So just grab the dam, I'm going to hold down on the buckle and just wriggle up on the plate on both sides. And that just completes the seals. Um, and maybe do that on both. So, so that's a, sort of a classic dam that I would use for uh, anteriors, uh, which is sort of five to five, four to four, um, more normally. And um, yeah, I use this all the time for um, anterior restorative work. Don't, don't bother trying to clamp, you know, canines and things if you can possibly help it. They're difficult teeth to clamp. So just come around to either the premolars or the molars. Uh, it's much easier to do your dentistry. Okay, so that's those clamps done. Let's carry on with our little walk around and we're going to look at the next clamp, which is the uh, number nine. So this is a, um, we put it in, it's a really popular clamp. And um, people who like to do anterior endo with a single tooth, then this is kind of the clamp I would recommend. So it's a winged one you place. Um, and I have to say, I, when I do endo anteriorly, I'll tend to dam like this. I prefer to do uh, sort of the sextant. Um, but if you do like to do a uh, single tooth, then this is kind of the one for you. So um, grab the dam like this and you want the wider part facing palatally, which is so you get a nice access for your endodontics. And that's also the way that the clamp goes, so that you can get it on otherwise. And you're going to open it up and you can place it on your central. So you would do this with a wing technique, but just with a single tooth. Um, and that's that's what that's for in the kit. Yeah, and you can customise these kits. So if, um, you know, there's when you didn't want to use so much you can you can you can change that up all right so keep going the next one we're on to is now on to the wingless clamps so um um we'll start with the the next two um which are, are popular um and my workhorse wingless clamp is a this one here which is called the w56 and then next to it we've got the um, w8a which is a very helpful clamp too so I'll get both of them out and we'll just talk you through them. So the W56 um, is a is a it's called a universal molar clamp. So it's excellent for upper and lower uh, molars, and it's particularly good for first molars for sixes because it's quite big, so it'll, it'll just fly onto those really easily. Um, uh, but also big sevens, basically not broken down teeth. I would say is the one you want to use this one for. Um, and it's really helpful. So maybe um, another question is, why would you ever want to use a wingless clamp? Because we're just showing the wing technique, which can be very nice. So why do we want to use a wingless technique? Well, some people might just prefer the wingless technique as a way of placing them, which um, is, is fine. I always usually teach winged for, for beginners, but the wingless does have its, it's a nice technique and it's quite easy to place. Um, but the, the main thing is wings is, is great when you don't have to be anywhere near it. But for restorative work, um, sometimes the wings will really get in your way. So I'm just looking at here. I've got an MOD cut on the um, six and I'm going to go ahead. Oops, I'm going to go on probably. I'm going to go ahead and place my wing clamp on the seven. And hopefully what you can see is that those wings, OK, are going to start to get in my way. And, and to be honest, it happens less with the tour bands because they're nice and springy and tight. But uh, you see it quite often, the, the wings actually get in the way. And can you see that that wing is stopping my wedge from going in and sitting horizontally. It has to come down at an angle to get away from the wing. So anywhere where I'm working near, that is going to be a bit of a pain. So for these situations, you're better using a wing technique. So it's important to have one in your armory. Um, but they're good clamps for lots of things too. So in this situation, I would probably use the W56. Pop that on. 
And because it's got no wings, it's going to come miles away from the tooth. All right. And it's going to absolutely not get in the way uh, when we're placing our wedge. So super uh, helpful. So W56 is a universal one. And then the um, the 8A, W8A, comes, see how the, um, just get the other one off as well. The tines of the rubber dam, the beaks, the bits, they come down a lot more aggressively. Okay, so the W56 on my right here, it's very good for, for full teeth, but the W8A, if you've got any kind of subgingival or broken down tooth, a little bit more grippy, a little bit more aggressive, and is the clamp I would go for. Okay, let's keep going. So we're now on to the more sort of, uh, they're the, the ones I've just shown so far are my nuts and bolts boats, uh, nuts and bolts clamps, they'll probably do 70% 70, 70 of cases that we do. And now we're on to maybe ones we're going to use for for more difficult ones. So um, we've got the B the B series the brink uh, the, the the sort of uh, originally we've got the brinkers clamps. I think the tour just called them the B series. Uh, but you've got the B one, B two, and um, B three. And these clamps are really designed for clamping uh, broken down teeth or subgingival teeth, and can be used as secondary clamps. Um, but they're also helpful as a primary clamp if you've got small teeth. So if I'm clamping at a, a seven or an eight, upper or lower, and it's a small tooth, I'll be using these. And particularly uh, the B2 and 3 are the ones I always use for uh, an upper seven. Um, you know when sometimes the maybe the tooth is slightly buckly placed and there's not a lot of space uh, with the condyle and it's really hard to place a clamp? These are you go to because they've got such a small profile. They'll, they'll fit where nothing else um, will. They're, they're fantastic up there. Okay, um, so... Yeah, so um, if we just get the B, get those out. Um, so the B1 is a universal for lower molars. Um, and the B2, okay, the way these work is you want, the again, the wider side goes on the buckle. So that would be for, let me get this right, uh, your upper left. That's right, yeah. And the, the B3 uh, would do the upper right. Just occasionally, though, I'll use them the opposite way around, you know, but it's really tight up to the con now, so that I've got the smaller wing going to the buckle. Um, so that's just a little tip for you if you're really tight for space. So, yeah, just looking at the B1, uh, use a wing wingless technique again. Oh, I've got to demo that, I'll do that now. Um, but you see, it's, it's a much more aggressive clamp, so it's going to be able to sit in and then really you can push it right down to really get down the root you see that there um and expose your really broken down teeth so these are you know I, I couldn't do any advanced rubber dam work to be honest without the brinkers clamps um so they're, they're absolutely fantastic so i just realized i hadn't done a demo of the uh, wingless technique so i'll just do that quickly using the w56 and i'll show you how i do it so there's a couple of ways of doing it you could Put the clamp on and then just throw everything over or you could use uh, the parachute technique uh, which is my preferred one so i've just uh, just again quickly punched the holes and um, so i'm going to do seven round two one so i've just punched the holes from one uh, around and use the hole size here and then again it's going to go down uh, this way so the inks towards the the mouth and what you do is you get your clamp your wingless clamp and you're going to feed it through uh, the hole okay and it so it's like that all right and then you bunch it all up like this so this kind of is really nice because it gives you the visibility to to be able to place the clamp on which sometimes you don't get with the the uh, wing technique um but it also carries the dam over the clamp which is super helpful so i'll then grab hold of that uh, bring it into the patient's mouth Pop it on the seven, okay, and then it's just a case of unfolding them. And just as a tip for you, um, sometimes I'll just pop a uh, just a punch in the I'm showing that okay in the top right hand corner of the dam. Um, and the reason you do that is just so that you know um, which is that corner, because sometimes it'll just rotate and flop on you a little bit when you bring it to the mouth. So uh, yeah, so that goes over the tooth. All right, and then it's just a case of doing uh, pretty much the exact same uh, thing. What do I do? Go around to. It's quite helpful because it tells you. So I'm going down to the, the one, so I can count round and have a look. So I'm down to the one. I can put that in, 
and then put the holes through just as I did before. Um, so probably, oh, I, I would say I always I always um, get it over the the clamp like I have there, and then I actually put it the frame on is the first thing I would do before I put the holes through because that um, makes it a lot more steady and easy to do. So I'll just quickly put the frame on, and then. Oops. I can put the other um, holes uh, through the rubber dam, which I will. These ones might be a bit easier. I should start with this, it's a bit easier than the top ones. But yeah, um, there you go. As it's going to be easier for me, I will do it quickly for you. So there you go, another dam done. Right, we're getting there. Let's go back to our kit. Okay, so we're on to our last two clamps. Um, and the next one is, um, I'm sure you've seen before if you've been on any kind of social media, which is called the B4. So this is a, you know, I would say one of the essential clamps that we have, um, which is really, really helpful for um, clamping kind of subgingival uh, class fives, um, veneers, exposing margins, and it's probably the most used accessory um, B clamp. So just grab that B4 out and we'll show you some of the thing, one of the things you can do with it. Um, but these these are just really really useful clamps. So I'm just going to bring back that anterior um, dam that I did. And um, the reason I went five to five when I did it was we actually left a class five uh, on the four. So can you see that that is not really got good exposure of that um, while it's inverted because we haven't really got the full margin um, available for us to to restore. So a Brinker's clamp is brilliant for giving you that um, retraction. And it's used as a secondary clamp, so you'd already have the dam placed with your primaries, your main ones that are holding down the clamp, and we'll use this as an extra. Okay, so there should be room for it to go on. Maybe this is one of those occasions where I take the dam round to maybe the six, or potentially even um, use a wingless uh, W2 just to give me a little bit more space. Um, but I can bring that to Brinker's clamp on, and you just sort of drive it down the tooth. And clamp and can you see how that has really beautifully um, opened up the isolation on the class 5 and just driven down uh, the tooth and tick that and move it around so the one thing you find about these is they're sometimes a little bit unstable and um, because they, they're small and they sort of pinch in one place um, and so you can need to stabilize them occasionally so the way that I do this um, Commonly is I'll use a liquid arm or a flower ball and we just make a bridge from one of the adjacent teeth just to stabilize the arm So just hold it in position and uh, No etch and bond or nothing and you just loop that over and you can do it in a couple of places if you want um, But one is often enough And we'll get the light cure Just give that a blast um, And that's usually enough just to hold it in position and I'll do this very very commonly when I'm using these uh, these B4 brinker clamps Okay, and that should be long enough. So that um, little cure of, of, of resin just holds that steady, stops it moving, um, and um, you can then crack on and do your work without worrying that the clamp's going to get lost. So that's the B4 clamp. Oopsie daisy. And it just pings off when you're ready. Okay. Um, so last clamp on the board is this one here, which is the B6. Um, so this is another B clamp for subgingival um, retraction, um, and it's a really helpful and nice clamp. And you can use it. I use it quite a lot for veneers or class fives. It's really stable as it is with a, a two bow shape. Um, but what we'll also commonly do, I'm sure you've seen this again on social media, is you can cut one of the arms off, and it just sometimes these arms kind of stop it from seating or doing some of the more creative things you can with them. Um, I use these quite a lot for posteriors and all sorts with a bit more advanced rubber damming, but you can bend the tines down to change the angles as well. So you can cut a few up, um, but they're also useful as a, as, a, as a single unit. So here is a single unit and you grab it here with the forceps. Okay, where was I? So uh, on this model, um, one of the things I did is I, I put a veneer on the uh, upright two of an ear prep and you see that the isolation doesn't really sort of expose that margin as you would want for veneer cementation. So you can grab uh, a B clamp is excellent for this. You can get hold of one of these 
and again it's bring the dam down by pulling it tight and um, which is easier done not on the model bring your brinkers down and then drive it down the tooth and let go because they're really nice and tight and see how that's just driven the dam right down the tooth to expose that veneer margin um, and allow really easy cementation subgingival isolation and you know you can try and do that with a floss ligature but to be honest with you it's, it's, it's it struggles. You really struggle to come as far anywhere near as far up with a with a floss ligature as you can with a brinkers clamp. So these are an essential and really useful um item. Okay, so that runs you through the um the, the twelve main clamps that we have um in the uh in the our starter kits. Um so um twelve kits, the autoclavable board, the rubber dam stamp and the ink. Um, and I just thought I'd show you the other ones we have on sale. And um, so, really, these are partly through requests from people. But we have the um, W two, um, which is just really like the two um, with without the wings. And um, we've got a, a double knot, um, which can be helpful for really smaller teeth, uh, small pre rollers. Quite like those. They're worth having. Um, and back up, we've got the eight uh, AB, which is a little bit like the W eight, um, but but with the wings. If people prefer a wing technique. Um, W7B, it's not a clamp I use too much, but I guess this is like an alternative for W56, which some people prefer. And then finally, uh, the the B5, which is very similar to the B6, but just slightly narrower uh, tines, it can be helpful too. So they're the ones we sell, I'm sure we'll add more, um, but that's the kit at the moment. Um, and we do uh, both a 12 board like this, but also a one with nine, so you can make your own kit. Um, as well as use use the one that we've we've developed. Now, I hope that's been uh, useful. Um, we're incidental limited, uh, and have a look at the website. And if you have any questions, uh, you can get in touch. You know, uh, thanks very much.